Mr Chair and thank you Commissioner for your response and I note your concern about the implementation of these anti-discrimination directives. But what I would say to you is that there is a paradox in regard to anti-discrimination legislation at EU level and it's this. I believe many Europeans are generally aware that we have anti-discrimination legislation and indeed that we have equality in the area of employment. But yet, reading your own reports, all available information suggests uh, that there are very low levels of reporting. And indeed, in your report, which was published last January, you give the, the commonest reasons for this. And these include the belief that nothing will happen as a result of reporting and also a lack of knowledge in how to go about reporting an incident and also negative experiences in relation to inconvenience, bureaucracy and crucially the length of the process. So again your report goes on to say that there's a need to make further efforts at awareness raising and reporting and the need also to make complaint system more consumer friendly as it were or customer friendly. So I think that we need proposals as to how to deal with these barriers and access to justice. I mean, we could look, for example, at the length of time during which a complaint could be made, getting rid of the short time limits that are there. We could look also at the cost of uh, proceedings. And I think in all of that, we need to link in with uh, national actors on the ground. I think the issue of remedies, and, and one of our colleagues spoke there a few moments ago, that some uh, uh, employers would prefer to, to pay the costs rather than you know, uh, comply with the legislation. Uh, I think that's a very important one. And practice seems in most member states that national authorities apply the, the lower scale of the sanctions available. So again, I know the Commission perhaps cannot intervene directly, but it's an important issue and it's one that makes a difference because if sanctions are not dissuasive, then they're meaningless. Um, the whole issue of the shift in the burden of proof argument where it's up to the respondent to prove there has been no discrimination, just is that working satisfactorily and do you feel that any further action is needed? And finally, in the context of the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, we have ratified that, and of course that has certain implications for our legislation, particularly in the area of reasonable accommodation for disabled persons. And do you believe that the ratification of the UN Convention will be meaningful without further action? That was the second question we asked you. Without any further action to make the non-provision of reasonable accommodation a discriminatory action. As Mrs. Lope-Fontaine has already said, it does not need to be costly. Thank you.